My name is Nicole from the Simmer Program. Here in the stem cell research uh, laboratory, I'm working under Dr. Helms on craniofacial development. So we're looking at the development of the face and what tells our face to shape itself the way it does. I've been learning the basics pretty much, how to do basically everything that you need to know to be able to perform experiments and to be able to analyze data. Two weeks ago, I was completely blown away. I felt a little bit intimidated and I was so frustrated because I just didn't know how to do anything. But everyone in this lab, no matter what level of education, they're so easygoing and they're so great as mentors and teachers and they're all really interested in what they're doing and really excited. Nicole is fantastic. She's an enthusiastic person, willing to try anything. And that is the hallmark of a great beginning scientist, that they're willing to jump in with both feet and see where things go. She's also been quite a mentor for some of the other students that are maybe a little bit quieter or a little bit shyer. And as a consequence, they've formed what everybody says is the A-team in the group. I definitely feel more comfortable in this lab and like I, I, I will be able to contribute to the projects now because I know how to do some of the things. Under the craniofacial project, one of the deformations that comes across when signal or a protein or something is blocked or something goes wrong is that deformations like my own have been cleft palates or much more severe ones. Nicole and Bo have been working together to understand the molecular basis for this craniofacial anomaly that in its most severe form leads to this clefting phenotype and what they found is very interesting that the cells and how they interact in the tissues that will give rise to the embryonic face these interactions are inappropriate the cells divide too much. We also have some insight into the molecular pathways that are disrupted. So it's, it's looking good at this two-week point. Of course, we need to repeat these and make sure that we get the same findings, but it's looking very promising. For sure, in this lab, I've messed up a couple of times, and I know that's something that, especially as a high school student, it's gonna keep happening, and it's frustrating to know that, but at the same time, it's eye-opening. It just makes me want to be better and learn more and ask more questions. One of my favorite things about this program is the poster session at the end of the summer. Students, when they first come to the summer program, they're often very shy. They don't really know the discipline in which we are trying to educate them. That by the end of the summer, these students are really experts. They're, they're functioning at the level of a graduate student. And to me, that's particularly gratifying. Trying to identify uh, the best students is one of the biggest challenges that we have. This year we had over 1,200 applications for 58 slots. We have a very major effort to try to identify students who are underrepresented in the sciences. We really, really try hard to have a diverse population of students. I took what I learned from stem cell about uh, craniofacial development. And so what I did is I tried creating a teaching tool for patients and parents. So this uh, here and this here is actually all interactive. So these are buttons that you can click and it'll zoom up to that certain area. And you can also grab it and make see the skeleton, turn it around, do a whole lot of things. And so I just wanted to use that to help uh, teach patients, especially children, because I mean, when you talk to children, sometimes they don't get it. And I didn't get it either at times, so I, just, I made this. So. It's one of the most, it's the most wonderful experience I've had ever. It's the best way I've spent my summer. It's so much hard work, but it all pays off in the end. I'm so proud of what I've done and I wouldn't take anything back. Even the long hours and the Saturdays coming in and all that.
So in fact, we've been tracking our students and I'm not aware of a single student who's not graduated from college. The vast majority, probably 90%, end up in majors in science and math. And we now have many students who are in MD, PhD, or combined degree programs. Here at Stanford, we have three or four students right now from the Simmer program who are now in our MD, PhD program. And there are others at Harvard and Duke and University of Virginia and, and other programs around the country. Next we have Nicole Jewell. There is nothing that keeps you on your toes more than a young student asking you questions. Simple questions that oftentimes make me think more deeply about our own science. And there I see the future in front of me. There they are, you know, and sometimes they're very young but so capable. And that's enormously rewarding. In my future, I plan to stick around, basically. Dr. Helms has graciously offered me lab time. Dr. Brown's opened his doors for me as well. So for now, I'll be here doing what I, what I did this summer and expanding more and learning more. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.